Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an AMD Phenom 2 X4965 Black Edition processor. In November of this year it will be 10 years old and for a CPU approaching a decade in age it still fetches a fairly decent price on the used market. This one was included with the purchase of an ASUS AM3 motherboard bundle I found on eBay and came paired with 8 gigs of DDR3 memory. Initially I wasn't sure if it worked or not so I decided to slap it into a test rig and take a quick look at the performance of this thing in 2019 before putting together a cheap gaming machine using these components later this week. So as I say for now, it certainly will be a quick look. First things first and after determining that it did indeed work just fine, I fired up Cinebench R15 to get an idea of both the multi and single core performance. With scores of 340 and 88 respectively, it will still give a couple of AMD's lower end FX series chips a run for their money, but as you can imagine, falls short of even the cheapest entry level Ryzen 3 CPUs. That's not really a sensible or fair comparison to make though, as I'm sure you'll agree. I'm happy to report that it does okay at handling editing in Premiere Pro CC 2015 though. Rendering a 30 second 60fps 1080p clip took around 50 seconds which isn't great but I was still able to navigate the program, make cuts and play my project preview back at full resolution reasonably well. The four Deneb cores of this 125 watt processor were really going to work here. When it comes to modern games though, well this is where the old architecture lets us down most. In yesterday's video some of you were asking me to add and benchmark Apex Legends, so I thought I'd give that a try here and unfortunately I had no luck in getting it to work. It was a similar story in Far Cry 5 whereby the game wouldn't even launch due to a quote, unsupported processor. But let's not get bogged down with what CPU can't run whatever game, because there's plenty this CPU can still play, albeit not always very well. Bear in mind, for this video, the processor was at stock speeds, though I'll be overclocking it when I put my AM3 based build together, so the story might change a little. Here at 1080p medium, the average frame rate recorded by Fraps was 44, with 1% lows and 0.1% lows of 23 and 16 respectively. There were certainly moments of quite noticeable lag with particularly intense scenes lowering our frame rate to the high 20s. It wasn't a totally unplayable experience by any means and the CPU never maxed out so to speak at 100% usage but dropping the settings here would probably do the performance a favour. The reason I stuck with medium for now was because it was suggested by the game and yeah considering this Phenom is approaching its 10th birthday I'll happily say it put up a pretty good fight. Fortnite at 1080p with the high settings saw our CPU reach max usage quite frequently, unlike the aforementioned Battlefield 5. Most of the stuttering occurred shortly after the initial jump to begin the battle, but when we were firmly on the ground, things settled down a bit. There was certainly still some hitching that typically occurred at pivotal moments, causing the untimely end of my player. But you'll see playable frame rates most of the time, especially in more open and empty areas. Interestingly, Just Cause 4 performed very well, though this game seems to rely more on a decent graphics card as opposed to a processor, at least from what I've observed. So sustaining at least 60fps at 1080p medium with any forms of anti-aliasing off shouldn't be too problematic and it certainly wasn't during this opening section of the game's initial level. This result was actually quite surprising. Shadow of the Tomb Raider though, well, I decided to run the in-game benchmark here but my attempt to do so was met with an initial lengthy wait. I mean, really lengthy. At least two and a half minutes of loading screens before anything happened. When something did eventually happen, I experienced a strange stuttery effect that only occurred once out of my three benchmark runs. The reason I used this run in the footage was because I wanted to point out that this might happen if you're using one of these Phenom CPUs, or it might not. When it did occur, the frame rate, as you can see in the top left corner, wasn't too bad, varying wildly depending on the in-game level, but the 965 was running at 100% usage all of the time. Before this benchmark run, just refused to load the final segment. I'm going to leave it there for now, but as I said before, I will be putting together an AM3-based build based on this processor very soon, 
So I'll be testing a larger library of titles then, as well as seeing what we can do in terms of a stable overclock. For now though, well it seems as though this thing is a mixed bag of unpredictable results, but I hope you can join me in the next one where we'll be testing it under different circumstances. So there we have it, if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you still use this processor in your system, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.